Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gord Heidel. I'm the Executive Director of the Regina District Industry Education Council, and it's our pleasure today to welcome Dr. Doug Donbrook. Uh, Doug is going to be talking to you about uh, being a chiropractor, what it's like, uh, the career path, opportunities, salary expectations, working conditions, uh, to really give you a good idea of, of uh, what being a chiropractor is like on, on a day-to-day -day basis. He's also going to talk on the education part uh, in detail for you. Uh, just a reminder, if you're watching this, uh, please uh, refer to the QR code on the poster and that'll take you to our website. On the website, uh, www.rdiec.ca, you will find a survey at the top. If you click on that, it's a very short survey, just a few questions. And uh, we really appreciate if you could do that for us. Uh, it does automatically enter you for a uh, chance to win a $50 gift certificate at the end of each month. So uh, if you can do that, that will help us with our reporting purposes. Thank you very much for doing that. And thanks again to Dr. Uh, Donbrook for coming on today to talk about his profession. Uh, thanks for the warm welcome, Gord. Uh, much appreciated. Um, just to let everyone know, uh, I've been a practicing chiropractor in Regina for over 25 years. Uh, my father was a chiropractor in Regina for over 40 years, and uh, long story short, that's how I got here today. Um, I must admit, becoming a chiropractor was not my first uh, career path, just because my dad did it, and I just wanted to do something else. Um, but as I was in university for a number of years, I completed a four-year degree in, in um, psychology, and then I just sort of reevaluated my life and my situation and thought that chiropractor thing was starting to look pretty good as a career path. So I continued my studies majoring in anatomy, uh, finished off some prerequisites that I needed to apply for chiropractic college, and luckily enough, I got in, and here I am today. Um, so at this point, I'd just like to uh, present to you a brief PowerPoint presentation prepared by the Chiropractors Association of Saskatchewan on uh, basically answering all the questions I think you want to know. Um, so primarily chiropractors deal with the musculoskeletal system. Um, and that, you know, the musculoskeletal system supports everything we do. It gives us the ability to move using our muscles and bones. Its primary function uh, includes supporting the body, allowing motion, and protecting all your vital organs. It's made up of the skeleton, the muscles, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, joints, and other connective tissue that support and bind the tissues and the organs together. What is an MSK condition? Well, it includes a wide variety of disorders that can impact the bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments, and connective tissue. It may result from physical trauma or other causes such as overuse. Injuries are considered acute, subacute, chronic, or recurrent, depending on the duration or the pattern of the presentation. MSK conditions commonly affect body parts such as the head and neck, shoulders, mid-back, low back, pelvis, elbows, wrists, hands, knees, ankles, basically anything. Unfortunately, if not managed properly, MSK conditions may become chronic and result in debilitating pain and dysfunction. Due to the high prevalence of these injuries, MSK conditions are the second greatest cause of disability worldwide. The number one cause of disability worldwide, if you're wondering, is arthritis. Next slide, please. Um, specifically in regard to back pain, it's estimated that one in eight Canadians will report having chronic back pain. So think of eight adults you might know, and one of them will have a chronic back issue. Back pain affects the workers' force as well. It's estimated that 85% of workers will suffer from back pain in their lifetime. That has a huge impact on workplace, the economy, and the lives of our workers. Next slide, please. So what do chiropractors do? Well, we treat a variety of MSK conditions, including, as you see here, back pain, concussion, whiplash, headaches, neck pain, sprain strains, work sports injuries, you know, mobility limitations, things like that. Uh, next slide. So as a patient, what do you experience? Well, when you first come to a chiropractor's office, you can either download the forms at home, fill them out, and it's a, basically a full-on health history. Um, you know, then you'll come to the back room, typically the exam room, at which point we'll go over your health history with you. Uh, discuss specifically what your problem is, why you're there, what you want us to do. Uh, the history will, you know, uh, lead to what sort of exam we do. So, you know, if you come in with a back problem, we'll look at your back. Um, then you kind of combine what you learned from the history and the exam to form some sort of diagnosis. And that's what is wrong with you. 
After which, typically we'll sit down with you, we'll go over what's called a report of findings, so that basically tell you what we think the problem is, what we can do to help, what you can do at home to help, and get the ball rolling in your treatment. At that point, we'll uh, discuss informed consent, which basically goes over pros and cons of treatment, treatment options, different variations, basically get your permission to go ahead. Uh, and then every day we have to write something in your chart, which is called a SOAP note. Uh, SOAP just stands for S is subjective, so that's what the patient tells us is wrong. Is it better, is it worse, same. O is our objective findings, so that's any sort of exam findings, palpatory findings, basically what we find is wrong. A is your assessment or diagnosis, so we know what the heck we're uh, dealing with every time we see you. And P is the treatment plan. So what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, how often we're going to do it, uh, what we've prescribed for you to do at home, et cetera. Uh, next slide, please. So what do patients experience? Well, chiropractors use a variety of mechanics to help patients. Um, patient education is a big one, uh, primarily touching on, on lifestyle recommendations there. A uh, major part of, part of chiropractic care is rehab exercises, We're basically trying to help you to do what you can at home in regards to stretching, strengthening, stability, that kind of thing. Workplace ergonomics are a huge, huge thing these days, um, especially with people working at home with the pandemic, of, you know, just poor desk, chair, kitchen table setup. Um, we love to get our hands on people. So joint mobilization and manipulation are things we really like to do to restore motion, get rid of muscle tension, hypertonicity, that kind of thing. Um, one of the most biggest things we do is spinal mobilization and manipulation. Um, we call that a spinal adjustment, which is a non-invasive procedure consisting of precise directive movement, which helps relieve pain and discomfort and restore range of motion to your spine. Chiropractors also utilize a lot of different soft tissue therapy techniques. Um, you know, I've got, I use laser, traction, uh, ultrasound, TENS machines, um, interferential current in my office. I also have an acupuncturist in my office. Um, other modalities include shockwave therapy, um, you know, and a bunch of different other soft tissue techniques. Uh, chiropractors were also primary care practitioners, so we can directly make referrals to medical specialists. We can refer for x-rays and ultrasounds and things like that, if need be. Um, next slide, please. So what are the goals of chiropractic treatment? Uh, and we have to make sure our goals line up with the goals of the patient. So really in the acute and chronic care phase, the big thing is to relieve pain. People really just want to get out of pain. So, you know, along with that, you just need to reduce muscle spasm, inflammation, and then when that happens, flexibility is restored, range of motion is restored. Um, we tailor the treatment plan specifically for everybody's individual injuries, age, you know, physical fitness abilities, things like that. And then really try to get people back to their activities and normal uh, daily life as quick as possible. Um, once the pain is resolved and those other things are resolved, we can move on to the rehab phase. And at that point, we typically try to increase strength, uh, maintain flexibility, stabilize whatever sort of injured area it is, work on proprioception, that kind of thing. And then uh, you can move on to what's called preventative care or elective care. Um, and then at that point, we'll talk about correcting postural habits, modifying your workplace for better ergonomics to reduce stress and strain and, and hopefully prevent injury. And uh, a lot of times we'll touch on lifestyle, nutritional, you know, considerations, stress, sleep postures, things like that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, chiropractors are spine, muscle, and nervous system experts. We provide qualified, effective treatment to promote health, alleviate pain, and improve quality of life for all ages. I have patients uh, presently in my practice right now that are two weeks old and up to, you know, their late 90s. It's a ton of fun. Uh, chiropractic is a drug-free practitioner, meaning uh, we fall under the Drug-Free Practitioners Act, so we do not prescribe medications. Our techniques are non-invasive and focus primarily on prevention. We will advocate on your behalf and try to get to the root cause of, of your issues. Next slide, please. Uh, chiropractors are an essential part of the healthcare system. We can hold privileges in, with the uh, Saskatchewan Health Authority and refer back and forth with other healthcare professionals. Chiropractors can order x-rays and ultrasounds in order to diagnose neuromusculoskeletal conditions. Chiropractors can refer directly to medical specialists, including orthopedic surgeons, neurologists, rheumatologists, et cetera. 
We have access to most of the electronic health record programs in the province, including PACS, and that's where the uh, provincial x-rays, MRI, CT scans are stored, so we can pull those up and view them. Uh, the EHR viewer is another provincial program, so we can actually take a look at the imaging, not just the reports. Um, so we can access your blood work, hospital admissions, medications and stuff uh, along that line in order to provide you the best care possible. As a regulated healthcare practitioner, practitioner the uh, Chiropractors Association of Saskatchewan is responsible for protecting the public. We set standards of practice, assuring the quality of care is maintained, and we evaluate and promote competency and handle all our disciplinary issues as guided by the Chiropractic Act 1994. Next slide, please. In Saskatchewan, chiropractic is a growing profession. There's a currently 225 chiropractors in close to 50 rural and urban communities. In Saskatchewan, there's been an 18% increase in the number of chiropractors over the last 10 years, which is a roughly 2% of an increase per year. In comparison with BC, Alberta, and Manitoba, and Ontario, we have the lowest rate of chiropractors per population. We have many clinics in Saskatchewan who are presently looking for additional chiropractors to help join us in our busy practices and we do expect that to continue. Chiropractic is one of the fastest growing healthcare uh, professions in Canada, with more than 7,000 chiropractors practicing across the country. Next slide, please. So how does one become a doctor of chiropractic? Well, presently you need a minimum of three years uh, of university. In chiropractic college, it's a four-year program with over 4,200 hours of training, including a 12-month internship. Courses cover a variety of health and chiropractic topics, including foundational biological sciences, and that's basically all your ologies, anatomy, pathology, physiology, microbiology, histology, et cetera, the list goes on. Uh, there's a lot of courses in clinical chiropractic which focus specifically on what we do. So that's diagnosis, orthopedic testing, spinal manipulation, manual therapy, rehab, biomechanics, kinesiology, focusing on different uh, populations like you know, kids, geriatrics, sports, you know, that kind of thing. We spend a lot of time reading x-rays, learning how to take x-rays, as well as learning to interpret uh, MRIs, CT scans, as well as uh, learning to read and understand uh, blood and urinalysis. And then uh, moving on to professional courses, so that's specific chiropractic studies, psychomotor skills, uh, related health professional courses, including business, law, ethics, professional courses, and a fair bit on research in the higher years. Um, there's two chiropractic schools in Canada. Uh, CMCC in Toronto has had a long and illustrious history as a very, very good chiropractic college. And uh, UQTR is uh, in Trois-Rivières, Quebec, and it's been around for roughly 20 years now. It's also a good college. Next slide, please. Um, so where do chiropractors usually work? Primarily right now, the most common thing is working in multidisciplinary clinics with other healthcare uh, practitioners, including uh, physicians, physiotherapists, massage therapists, exercise therapy, etc. cetera. Um, group practice with just a handful of other chiropractors is also very common and more so in the smaller, more rural centers, uh, solo practice is, is quite common because you're just the only guy around. Um, chiropractors get referrals from a number of different sources. Uh, probably the greatest source of referrals is really location, where you are. People just, you know, location, location, location. Um, the other big thing is from other patients. Patients tell patients, you know, and other friends, family to come. And a lot of referrals from, you know, medical doctors, physiotherapists, massage therapists, exercise therapists, people that work in, you know, other healthcare fields. And as being primary care practitioners, we can take the lead role in uh, car accident victims and uh, people are suffering from work-related injuries. Uh, some chiropractors will tend to focus their practice in specific areas, um, such as sports injuries, geriatrics, rehab, specialized assessments for workers' comp, SGI injuries, things like that. And we do have uh, residency programs once you graduate from the college, if you're so interested. Um, next slide, please. Uh, typical chiropractic practice, yeah. Most guys work a 40-hour work week, full-time, but it's a great career for work-life balance. Um, 
I'm sure the burning question everyone wants to know is how much money do we make? Uh, so in Saskatchewan, the average gross income is about 235. After expenses, you're looking at 138, and that's that's pre-tax. So you know, the more you work, the harder you work, the more people you see, the more money you make. If you want to, you know, have a little more work-life balance, you don't need to work as hard. But subsequently, you won't make as much money. Next slide, please. So, is becoming a chiropractor a career for you? You need to ask yourself, are you passionate about promoting health and wellness? Are you someone who has great people skills and the drive to be a leader in your community? Are you interested in a primary contact healthcare profession whose focus is on the patient through treatment and education? Are you someone who enjoys solving challenging problems, collaborating with the team and serving diverse populations? So that's everything I have for the PowerPoint. Um, at this point, uh, Mr. Heil just asked me to touch on a few things about being, you know, pros and cons of becoming a chiropractor. Um, and a lot of the pros are very similar to the cons. Um, I, I must say it's, it's fantastic being self-employed. It's great. You're your own boss. I can set my own hours. I can take holidays as I please. Uh, the downside is you're your own boss. If you don't work, you don't get paid. You still have office overhead. Um, and as a self-employed person, you don't have any benefits like you do in a salaried job. You don't have a health plan. There's no pension. There's no paid holidays. There's no paid days off. You don't have a guaranteed income or salary. And those can be tough. You need to really factor that in when you're thinking about those things. And let's face it, running a small business can be stressful. Um, you know, we go to school for a really long time to learn how to be doctors, not run a business. And that, a lot of times, you learn on the fly. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you get sick or injured and you can't work, you still have to meet your business overhead. You've got bills to pay, staff to pay, your utilities, rent, etc. So you really need to keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, another pro is the diversity of things we can do and the places we can work. It's, it's really fun working in multidisciplinary clinics. Um, you know, you can set up your own private clinic, solo practice. We can, you know, making inroads and working in hospitals. Um, and you can specialize if you wish. You can focus on radiology, sports injuries, working with uh, professional sports teams. Um, it's really interesting focusing on geriatrics and the aging population. There's a lot of diverse needs there. It can be very rewarding. Um, uh, there's a number of chiropractors focusing their, their skills on babies, just treating pregnant women and babies. And that, again, is really rewarding. Those little guys get together, uh, heal up really fast and really benefit from our care. Personally, I love working with people. I just love getting people better, helping them out. Patients come in all crooked and broken and sore and stiff and tight. And they can't work, they can't play sports, they can't play with their kids. And it's incredibly rewarding getting these people back to life as quick as possible. Um, I guess one of the difficult things I must say is the education. It is a long, hard role. Uh, you know, and it's also very expensive. The chiropractic college is a private college. We don't have any government funding, so tuition can be high. Um, the other thing is when you graduate, since you don't have a salary job, you're not making a lot of money. So it can be a little tough in the first number of years, making ends meet and paying back those student loans. Another tough part of the job is just how physical it is. Uh, it is very physically demanding. At the end of the day or the end of a busy week, you know, I can hurt my wrists, you know, and chiropractors do suffer from a lot of repetitive strain injuries to wrists, elbows, shoulders, backs, that kind of thing. And though, even though we know better, quite often we'll just keep working through it, push through it, um, you know, because we just have to make ends meet and pay your overhead, even though we should take some time off when we have those injuries. Um, there's not a lot of reciprocity either. If, if, if you do want to move to a different province or a different country, you can't just pack up and go. There's licensing exams for every province in Saskatchewan. There's national board exams in Canada you have to pass. And if you want to go to a different country like the United States, you've got to sit through their national exams and provincial exams as well. And again, those are really challenging. So it's, it's not that easy to just pick up and leave. Uh, and again, the other thing is if you do want to move somewhere, Again, you're starting from scratch. You have to build up your practice or, you know, buy an existing practice. So then your income plummets and you're back to square one again. So that is about everything I've got to say for my presentation. Um, so Gord or Mr. Heidel, if you'd like to step in, let me know. Uh, thank you, Doug. Uh, just a, a question. So if I understand correctly, if, if you get certified and you're practicing in Saskatchewan, 
if you wanted to move to uh, BC to move your practice, you would have to retake exams again? Is not, you would not have to retake the Canadian National Board exam, but you would have to take a provincial board exam, yeah, in BC, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's it's awesome. a it's a lot easier than it used to be. Now most of these exams are just focusing on uh, the interprovincial legal issues, so it's it's not as much clinical competency as it used to be. But there still are interprovincial exams. Yeah. Yeah, I got to tell you, you know, I've experienced uh, firsthand uh, being crippled to the point where I couldn't even stand, and going and seeing you, and, and the difference that it makes. It, you know, I walked out of the office. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> Uh, and chiropractic wasn't a big, uh, uh, well, it wasn't well known when I was growing up, but uh, it's becoming more and more well known. And like I say, I've experienced the benefits of it. Uh, and it's nice to hear that there, there's going to be demand in, in your area. Uh, so somebody coming out of college, uh, would you, uh, you know, as a, as a clinic owner, would you consider hiring them and then just do a contract basis? Is that a possibility for graduates coming up? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Uh, I just brought a new grad into my my practice not too long ago, and th you know there's different arrangements for that, but typically you just work on a percentage basis. So the new practitioner takes a percentage of their billings home, and a percentage goes towards uh, clinic overhead and office management. Uh, as far as sciences go, uh, if you're looking at getting into chiropractic, uh, like you had a degree first. Can you go directly from high school into that college or do you need to get uh, a university experience first under your belt? You do need three years of university prior to admission to the chiropractic college. Yeah, and there's a lot of prerequisites. So typically most everybody has a degree before getting in, yeah. Yeah, and uh, your high school, you need all your sciences, of course, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, that was really informative, Doug. It, uh, you had some great information there. It, I often wondered about the physically demanding part. Like when you've worked on me, it, it's been fairly physically demanding and I've kind of worried about you because you're, you're having to work that hard. Um, so is, is there technology coming along to help you out uh, with some of that, uh, the physical end of it with your job? Because it is physically demanding, I think at times. Yeah, there, there are a lot of different uh, chiropractic techniques that can limit or reduce the amount of pounding that we take. Yeah. Um, there's a number of different, they just call it manual assisted adjustments. So there's, there's tools that we can use and special like chiropractic tables and beds that can help take the strain off, off the practitioner. Um, but yeah, it's not robotic or quite yet. Yeah, good deal. Well, thank you very much. You, you provided a ton of information that's going to be very helpful for kids who are thinking about uh, possibly pursuing a, a, right. a career in, in chiropractic. And uh, like I say, it, it uh, I think it's going to be a, a field that's going to continue to grow, especially with the aging population of baby boomers. Uh, we're going to need your help. And I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy day. Uh, to come and talk to the students and uh, to provide the, this and, and to allow us to put it on the YouTube channel so that they can reference it and uh, learn about it and make some good decisions as they transition out of high school. So thank you very much, Dr. Donbrook. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me to the chat. Okay.